Okay, in this video, we're going to develop a fairly simple and straightforward real-world data acquisition and signal processing system. And we're going to use three tools. We're going to show you how to use C Sharp to develop a simple Windows Forms application that will grab data from a data acquisition unit and do a fast Fourier transform on it to tell you what uh, frequency, uh, magnitude, and phase angle components are in that waveform. We're going to use MATLAB in a very, very simple script we're going to develop to generate the waveform that we're going to send into the data acquisition unit. And the data acquisition unit we're going to use is called a LabJack. And if you look up in the upper left-hand corner here, this is the unit we're going to use. It's a LabJack U12. Uh, you can probably use any other data acquisition unit, uh, like an Arduino, if you want. But we're going to use a LabJack. And one of the reasons why uh, is because it comes packaged with some very useful uh, pre-made applications that are very helpful in configuring your system. Uh, in, the, in the middle here, you see a screenshot of one of the applications. It's basically a digital scope application that immediately recognizes the lab jack plugged into your computer and plots the incoming waveform up here on the top. And in real time, it does a fast Fourier transform analysis. And here on the bottom, you can see the results of the FFT analysis. So it shows, in this case, I get three peaks, uh, three separate waveform uh, frequencies comprise this input waveform. So very useful, and there's a lot of uh, um, example code that's included with this that you can bring right into your C-sharp application to help you uh, access and configure this um, LabJack. And um, we're going to develop here on the right a, a Windows Forms C-sharp application that does something very similar to this LabJack. Uh, it's called the LJ Scope application. Uh, it's going to be a, quite a bit faster than the LJ Scope, and it's going to be more tailored to what we need. As you can see on the top, it takes the input waveform, and on the bottom, it does a fast Fourier transform. Now, this is a three-part series. Uh, this video right here is basically an introduction. We're going to talk about a, uh, the overall plan and the design of this system, and we're going to step back and make sure all of our signal levels and data rates and connectors are all known before we start plugging things in and writing code. And then we're also going to talk in this video a uh, very simple MATLAB script on how to generate analog signals and send them out. A uh, second video is a more in-depth tutorial explaining really what is a fast Fourier transform. And instead of using some complicated um, equations, we're going to do more of a conceptual visual understanding of the fast Fourier transform. And at the same time, we're going to develop this application in the upper right in C sharp that, that takes an input waveform and develops a fast Fourier. And in the third video, we're going to actually take the LabJack, connect it to the computer, and modify this C sharp um, fast Fourier application to do some real time acquisition of data from the LabJack and uh, the fast Fourier transform. Here is an overall plan and design of the system we're going to use. Now you can see there are three major components here. I've got two computers, and I've got the data acquisition unit here, which is the LabJack, it's the U12. Now keep in mind, you don't need two computers. I'm just using two computers here to make it a little bit cleaner, but you can do this with one, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Now on this computer, all I'm running is MATLAB, and again, it's, it's, I'm gonna generate a simple script of maybe five or six lines of code, that define the analog waveforms we want to send into this uh, data acquisition unit. And in one line of code, it will take those waveforms and send them out to the sound card on this computer. And we're going to grab that. We're going to plug into this 3.5 millimeter headphone output jack in the audio card on this computer. And we're going to grab that data and send it as input into the lab jack. Now, the output of this is going to be a 1 to 2 volt peak to peak, uh, depending on where the volume is set on this computer audio. And that, that audio is going to go into the analog input on the, the lab jack, and that can accept plus or minus 10 volts. So we know we're good on the uh, audio levels. Now, as I mentioned, you don't need two computers to do this. 
Uh, you, can, you can have MATLAB on this other computer and generate the waveforms and send them out the sound card on this computer to the lab jack and then read it in. But I'm just doing it this way with a second computer for, uh, to make it a little bit cleaner. And then from the lab jack, it's going to take that analog input on one channel and do an analog to digital conversion. And it's going to send the samples out through, right here you can see a USB 3 connector. And that USB 3, we just plug it into the computer and it's going to send the data into the computer. Now in the computer, I mentioned that, that LabJack comes with this uh, prepackaged um, application it's called LJ Scope, and it takes the input from that LabJack into the computer through the USB and plots the input, and you can see the waveform here, and in real time does an FFT, which you can see on this lower trace. Now we're going to also develop an application like this in C Sharp, uh, like I mentioned before. Now, um, first of all, in, in generating this, these waveforms and feeding them into the uh, lab jack, how are we going to do it? Well, uh, like I said, we're going to take the, here is the, the analog uh, audio outputs from the sound card. And you can see it's got six outputs, and, or five outputs and one input. This is for the surround sound and for a microphone input. So this is basically a... Um, three and a half millimeter or one eighth inch standard stereo headphone jack. So we're just going to plug in, you can see right here on this uh, cable, it's a standard one eighth inch um, plug. And what I've done is I, uh, we're going to get a, uh, a special jumper that's very easily available, widely available, and it converts this one eighth inch uh, headphone jack into two channels with RCA plugs on both. So it separates it out into two separate channels. And one reason why we're doing that is working with this, the wire coming off this 1 8 inch uh, plug, the wires in here are very, very, very small and tough to work with. So this breaks it out into two RCA plugs which have bigger wires. It's got a, a signal and a, surrounded by a sheath. And what you can do is you can snip off one of these conductors and then connect those two wires to some jumpers that you connect into this uh, into the screw terminals on the lab jack. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and like I say, it's going to be plus or minus one or two volts coming out of this plug, which is going to be fine for this analog input to the lab jack. Now, coming out of the lab jack, um, we have to make sure that the sample rate on the sample data coming into the computer over the USB is not too much. Well, as you can see here on the LJ scope output, we're going to be putting out a 60 hertz plus a 120 hertz, which is the second harmonic of the 60 hertz, plus a 180 hertz uh, component. So we're going to adding three waveforms together in MATLAB, 60, 120, and 180 hertz. And Totally, those are less than 200 hertz. So Nyquist tells us we only need like a 400 hertz sample rate to determine the frequency content of those waveforms. So 400 hertz sampling is all we need. In fact, we're going to be doing four, a little over 4,000 hertz sample. We're going to use 4,096. We, that's really overkill. We don't need that. But it does give you some nice uh, waveforms on your scope. So we're going to use a 4096 sample rate. So is that going to be too much for the USB? Well, a USB 3.0, and that's what this connector is, has a maximum data rate of 640 megabytes per second. Not megabits, megabytes. Now, if we take a 4096 data rate and each sample is a 16-bit number, then 16 bits per sample times 4096 samples gives you a data rate of 65 kilobytes per second. So you can see that is way, way, way below the maximum capability of a USB 3. So we are way below. There's no problem whatsoever uh, sending this kind of data, even if we're going to stream it. Now, we're not going to stream it. We're going to do what's called a burst mode. And burst mode means, uh, in our case, maybe every minute we're going to grab a second's worth of data, or 4,000 samples, 
and just grab 4,000 samples, stop, wait for a minute, and grab 4,000 more. So we're going to use burst mode, uh, so we're going to even less requirement on this um, USB 3. So that's the basic plan. Uh, we know that our signal levels are good. We know what connectors we're going to use. Uh, we know that our data rates are okay. So now what we're going to do is jump into MATLAB, and we're going to generate the analog waveforms, the 60, 120, and 180 hertz waveforms, and show how we can send it out to the lab jack. Okay, so now I'm in MATLAB, and what I've done is I've opened up a new script editor. And to do that, you just go to New Script, and it will give you a blank editor for the script, and just enter in these uh, five lines of code. Now let me explain to you what each line of code is. Pretty straightforward. Uh, T just sets up the array of time values that we will plot the uh, waveforms against. And to do that, you use the lin space, and that gives you a linear um, space of time values going from 0 to 10 seconds with a total number of 40,960 samples. Okay, so I'm going to sample at 4,096 samples per second for 10 seconds, which means 40,960 samples. So now T is a array of time values from 0 to 10 with 40,960 values in that array. Now I need to just set up the frequencies, magnitude, and phase angle of the three waveforms I'm going to add together to give the composite waveform that I will send out to the data acquisition unit. So I've got three frequency um, va uh, variables here. F1 defines the, the main frequency, and that is a 60 hertz, and the magnitude of that is 1.0. Now, it's best to put these in, in maximum values of plus or minus 1, but it's not necessary. We'll see a little bit later. Um, so I've got a, a magnitude of 1 at 60 hertz. I've got another sine wave, 120 hertz, which is a sec harmonic with a magnitude of 0 and a phase angle of 0 and a third harmonic which is 180 hertz with a magnitude of 0 0.5 and a phase angle of 20 degrees. Okay, so I'm just defining the magnitudes, frequencies, and phase angles of each of the three components. And here I just add those three components together. I generate sine waves and add them together. So for the fundamental, the 60 hertz, I've got M1, which is the magnitude of uh, 1, times sine 2 times pi, which is in a built-in built value in MATLAB for pi, times F1, which is this frequency 60, times T. And I'm adding to it the second harmonic, which is magnitude 2, which is 0, times sine 2 times pi times F2 times T, plus the phase angle. And I'm taking the phase angle has to be in radians for this sine. So I'm converting the degrees to radians, which is the phase angle in degrees times 180 over pi. And then I'm doing exactly the same thing for the third harmonic, m3 times sine 2 times pi times f3 times t plus the phase angle. So now my y array is the composite waveform adding these three sine um, values together. Now, to send that out to the sound card, I just have this one line of code. And it's just saying, send to the sound card. And this uh, SC means to scale it to make sure that the input is from zero, or from minus one to one. So plot to the sound card this Y function and use 4,096 samples per second. And basically, that's all it is. I generate the waveform, send it to the sound card, and if I run it, you can hear uh, the sound that's going to the sound card through the um, audio. Okay, so that is the, what's going out to the uh, sound card is the composite waveform, and we're also hearing it over the uh, speakers. So I've got it for 10 seconds. It just ran for 10 seconds. I can change that. I can modify, I can add some second harmonic, run it again.
So now we're pretty much all set, and um, the next video we'll talk about the FFT and what it is, and we'll start to develop a C-sharp application. And in the third video, we'll actually connect up the um, LabJack and um, acquire data uh, in real time and do an FFT. Hope this helps, and take care. Have a good day.